Good morning and welcome to worship with Christ the King Lutheran Church in Bozeman, Montana. Today is the third Sunday after the day of Pentecost and we know a whole bunch of folks are likely celebrating Father's Day today. So happy Father's Day to those of you who are celebrating. And it's also the first full day of summer. So woohoo, Northern Hemisphere, summer, gotta love it. Uh, the bulletin, the order of worship for this service is in the link below this post. If you would like to follow along on another device or even print it ahead of time if you would like to do that. Uh, and if you would like to support the ministry of this congregation, there's information in that bulletin as well as on our website, which is ctkbozeman.org, if you would like to support the ministry of this congregation. Again, welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, O God, to serve you in all things, to have courage when the cost is high, to have endurance and strength when we feel weak, to labor faithfully, knowing that your rewards are rich even if we can't see them immediately. Help us to take up the cross and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision for all day long. 
If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O oh, Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6. Paul writes, Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How could we, we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin. Once for all, but the life he lives, he lives in God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to SGN, Some Gospel News. I am your host, Kieran Anderson. It's been a mad, mad world since the onset of coronavirus, and today we'll cover two corona-related stories whose endings might surprise you. We turn now to our economics correspondent, Ian McMoneybags, who has some surprising news from the pet market. Tell me, Ian, what is going on? Kieran, it's been crazy times at the pet store. During the coronavirus pandemic, many families have decided it's time to get a pet. Dogs have been a hot item as families have canceled their travel plans and now have the time to stay at home to teach their puppies the important things like how not to chew on the sofa and how to go to the bathroom outside. Another popular choice has been cats. Families who order their groceries online and stock up on supplies from Amazon have acknowledged the need to do something with all the shipping boxes. Widely known for their inability to pass up an open box, curious little kitties have been flying out of the animal shelters and into family kitchens for kitty playtime everywhere. One market for pets has not fared so well, and that's sparrows. Sparrow prices have taken a precipitous tumble from recent highs of $5 per bird all the way down to two sparrows for one cent. While it remains to be seen if demand will rebound, it's not all bad news for sparrows. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew that not one sparrow will fall to the ground apart from the Father. So, regardless of their status in the world, sparrows can be assured they are a beloved part of God's creation. And that is some Gospel news. <laughs> well, that is some Gospel news. Another hot topic during the coronavirus lockdown has been haircuts. Here with commentary is our pop culture reporter, Freya Selfie Riffick. During shelter in place, the world was wondering, will we ever get a haircut again? For most, the answer was not now. But a few brave souls took matters into their own hands. Looks like this guy got a hold of the scissors. Do not trust dad. I forgot to use the mirror. Looks like we have a clear first. Um, this guy must have met a lawnmower in a dark alley. For those of you who may be in a similar situation, not to worry. Jesus points out that God loves each of us so much, he has even counted all the hairs on our heads. And if he values each individual hair that much, even the ones that have ended up on the ground from bad COVID haircuts, imagine how much he loves you as a whole person created in the image of God. Now that is some gospel news. Well, there you have it, folks. No need to worry for ourselves or our friends or family. We are loved more than two sparrows and more than all the hair on the floor from COVID haircuts, which, as Jesus points out, is a whole lot, to say the least. And as the Gospel of Matthew reminds us, this is good news. So good, the news needs to be shouted with joy because a whisper is not loud enough. And that is some gospel news. Siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. After I saw the fantastic children's message that Ian and Kieran and Freya put together, I thought, right, I'm not sure I even need to preach a sermon because that was pretty fantastic. And uh, if you aren't familiar with SGN as initials and uh, that sort of video setup, uh, John Krasinski, an American actor, has did, put together a series of videos. You can find them all on YouTube, SGN, uh, some good news. Um, anyway, so thank you to the Andersons for that fantastic children's message. And what an excellent reminder and way to tie all in with COVID. You guys rocked it, so thank you. But it's not the whole story. That's some gospel news, and it's pretty amazing gospel news. But hopefully you were paying attention when we were reading Matthew just a second ago. Because all of that good news uh, is part of Jesus sending out his first 12 disciples to carry on with his mission to do the things he'd been doing. He tells them he sends them out as sheep in the midst of wolves, and he prepares them to meet no small amount of resistance as they proclaim the kingdom of God come near. My study Bible, uh, and it looks like this, this is the one I have at home, complete with duct tape, right? Um, it's a HarperCollins study Bible, I like it, lots of good footnotes. 
Uh, but one of the things that they do in this study Bible is they put all these headings in uh, amongst the paragraphs of the text. And those headings aren't in the Greek manuscripts from which our English translations come. But sometimes they're helpful if you're looking for a particular passage. You know it's got to be somewhere in the middle of Matthew. And so, you know, you can flip through and find the headings uh, to help understand where things are in the course of the story. And in Matthew's chapters 9 and 10, my Bible puts these headings in uh, to help um, serve as sort of bookmarks or as waypoints, markers as the story unfolds. And the headings are these. The mission of the 12, coming persecutions, have no fear, the cost of discipleship. And our good news, sparrows, hairs counted, that, that goes in the section of not having fear. But that section of not having fear is in the midst of some other um, some other things that Jesus has to say to his disciples, that he sends them on a mission, persecutions are coming, and discipleship is costly. At the beginning of the reading for this morning, we hear Jesus tell his friends that his mission doesn't bring peace, but a sword. And we might think, hold on a second, like I know congregations whose names are Prince of Peace, Lutheran Church. What's up with Jesus saying he's bringing a sword? Well, the sword is what happens when the message of the gospel meets the powers of the world and things are unsettled because true peace, the shalom of God, is is something that gets made, but it's not something that just gets kept, right? Like, oh, well, this, just don't say anything. Let's just keep the peace. No, that's not what Jesus is here to do. Jesus comes and tells the truth about us. Jesus comes and tells the truth about the world as we have shaped it. And the world all too often reacts to words of grace and mercy and inclusion with violence. And so Jesus comes bringing a sword so long as the powers that be in the world resist God's rule and will. The very act of peacemaking, as Jesus' ministry demonstrates, can generate violence because healing and restoration and the conquest of death threaten the foundations of all human assertions of power in defiance of God. And yet, Jesus tells his followers not to be afraid because God knows and cares even for the sparrows that are sold two for a penny. God cares for what the world considers insignificant. It's all over scripture. God cares for the weak and the poor, widows and orphans, for the ill and the broken. God's eye is on the sparrow. God knows even the hairs on our heads better than we do. The threat of violence and death were real concerns for the first disciples and for some in the early church. But those threats would no longer be the determining forces in their lives. And they're not the determining forces in our lives either. Because the one who has ultimate power over our whole being exercises that power with mercy and with love. Jesus' call to discipleship makes all other claims on our identity and allegiances secondary, right? Jesus says, unless you hate them, you can't, you're not worthy of me. And some biblical scholars will tell us that that was a, a, for, a figure of speech, um, pitting two things against each other, saying you hate one and love the other. It doesn't mean you actually like are full of hostility toward the one that you hate, but in terms of priorities, they're pretty clear. All of the other things that would claim our allegiance, anything else that would tell us who we are, has to come second to who God says we are. 
That's true even of family, of comfort, of country, even our way of life. Once you make following Jesus your first priority, everything else falls by the wayside. Not because God takes it away from us, but just because that's how the world works. As long as the world opposes those who set out to transform it, working for the justice and righteousness of the kingdom and the kingdom of God. As long as the world opposes those sent to transform it, those working for transformation will pay a high price. No one tangles with the powers that be in the world and gets away unscathed. It was true then, and it's true now. That's why Jesus tells us that God's eye is on the sparrow and the hairs on our heads are counted. Jesus casts out fear, not just so we can be comfy and cozy and carefree, but so that we can follow him. Jesus says, do not be afraid because he has set us free from the power of sin and death and the life he gives really is life. It is for you, it is for me, it is for all people, every single one created in the image of God. And it is for the restoration, the recreation of all things that we might walk together in newness of life. Amen. Let us join Christians around the world in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. 
open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Bless our companions in South Africa and Bolivia. Bless our siblings in Christ in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And bless Trinity Lutheran Church in Shoto, St. John's Lutheran Church in Great Falls, St. Paul Lutheran in Cutbank, First Presbyterian Church in Cutbank, and the Northeastern Ohio Synod. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Give knowledge and wisdom to all who seek to remediate mining sites. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. And make us all faithful stewards of creation. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Help us remember that all people are created in your image. Make us bold to say that black lives matter and trans lives matter. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of love, we give you thanks for Andy and Aaron Peterson married on Saturday. Lord, bless them as they begin their life together as husband and wife. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Healing God, bring wholeness, health, peace and hope to all who are ill or injured and to all who care for them. We pray especially for COVID-19 patients, for Edith, Adrian, Nina, Ryan, Butch, Bruce, Bill, Duncan, Luke, and those we name aloud now. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In this moment of silence, your prayers are invited. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. If you are worshiping with someone else, I encourage you to share a sign of God's peace with them. And if you are not, know that Christ the King Lutheran Church greets you with God's peace. Let us pray. Thanksgiving, blessing, and praise be yours, God of the Incarnation, because you care for us and for our prayer. May our love for you and our likeness to you be strengthened every time we pray. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, neither, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.